1944 and 1945, two underground scenarios, one in Yugoslavia and the other in Berlin. Obviously some people are confused about the difference between the two scenarios. Scenario 1, Yugoslavia My great-grandfather Kaiser Adolf, one Hitler the Hohenzollern, was abducted from Berlin in December 1943 and held prisoner of war in a converted subway train station jail in Yugoslavia from 1943 to 1959. They built a subway train station, never diverted the trains through it, they continued to run on top, and converted it into a jail. The female who hosted the dinner he was abducted from in December 1943 got pregnant with his sperm, stolen whilst he was unconscious in the jail in 1944. They then attacked him and chemically sterilized him whilst he was unconscious, to attempt to create the false idea that the illegally conceived gestating baby was his only option for an heir. After they confirmed he was infertile and disposed of the rest of his stolen sperm, they let him regain consciousness. That dinner host female then had a miscarriage on the other side of the bars outside his cell in April 1944. It ruined their extortion plot to steal my imperial family completely, leaving no possibility of her getting pregnant again, as they had thrown away his stolen sperm and sterilized him, making him infertile. If the baby had been born successfully in late October or early November 1944, they would have tried to torture Kaiser Adolf, one into passing on his personal memory family history to the child, by victimizing him whilst making him touch it. They said they would only take him back to Germany, like a shackled prisoner, if he agreed to marry the female in Germany when he arrived, make her a princess, and adopt the baby as his heir, after being paraded in front of waiting lunatics, traitors and terrorists. But only after the baby was born, until then he would remain chained up and not be allowed to bathe or change his clothes. For at least nine months. If he had been able to agree and been dragged back to Germany with the woman and the baby, they would have killed him shortly after he made it all official and made the baby Kaiser, so they assumed everything that now belongs to me already belonged to the baby before it was even born. The baby itself was deliberately inbred with Kaiser Adolf's stolen sperm in a female relative selected by his evil cousin Albert Einstein. It was an attempt to falsely portray that homosexuals, and to a lesser extent albinos, in my imperial family history had those natural genetic details due to inbreeding in a past generation, using a deliberately illegally inbred child as pretend proof. Scenario 2, Berlin 1944-1945 A New Zealand female, who was already pretending to be a man using the name Fritz, started pretending to be Kaiser Adolf Hitler in Berlin after he was abducted. Initially, it was for a voice impersonation for radio broadcasts only. Then later they let her dress up, dyeing her hair black, the wrong color. She was 8 centimeters shorter than Kaiser Adolf, had blue eyes, and white hair. A prostitute called Janet Podolsky took a job pretending to be the imposter Fritz's fiancé, under the name Eva Braun, starting 1944. Both were found dead, Eva shot by imposter Fritz, and imposter Fritz shot by an onlooker because of what it did to Eva's body after shooting her, on top of each other in mid-1945, in a bunker in Berlin. Janet's identification documents were on her body, and an employment contract with the terms, conditions, and pay for her job pretending to be Eva Braun was found in a filing cabinet. A fake murder-suicide note, written afterwards, was found claiming they got married and had a secret baby together in the past before World War II. That was actually impossible, because both of them were female. Note, both imposter Fritz, pretending to be Adolf Hitler, and Janet Podolsky, pretending to be the imposter's fiancé and lover Eva Braun, in Berlin 1944 to mid-1945, when they both died, were female. There cannot be a baby that was the child of Fritz and Janet, like in the murder-suicide note, as they were both female.
It is a physical impossibility for there to be a person with both Fritz and Janet as the parents of an ancestor via DNA tests from biological samples. If people insist on pretending Kaiser Adolf I was found dead in that bunker in 1945 after marrying Eva Braun, Janet Podolsky, they will not find a person with both Fritz and Janet as both biological parents of an ancestor to pretend to be me. Two females cannot take one over each and make a baby out of it, which is why the body found dead in the bunker in Berlin in 1945 could not have been Kaiser Adolf Hitler. And so we move on. I am the only official great-grandchild and successor to Kaiser Adolf I Hitler the Hohenzollern, who was in POW jail in Yugoslavia between 1943 and 1959, revived me with CPR the day I was born in 1972, and died the 20th of April, 1982. My biological great-grandmother was Janet Podolsky. The female prostitute who was employed to pretend to be Eva Braun, alongside Fritz the imposter pretending to be Adolf Hitler, between 1944 and their death in that Berlin bunker mid-1945. The only reason Janet was found and asked if she wanted the job pretending to be Eva Braun after Kaiser Adolf I was abducted, was because she had the firstborn and only registered child to his stolen sperm, stolen off him in 1906 in hospital when Kaiser Adolf I was 17. If Janet had not have had that child in 1907 and registered it to herself at birth, her daughter Donna Podolsky, who went on to marry Joseph Stalin of the Soviet Union, they would not have bothered offering her the job pretending to be Eva Braun. After they did offer her the Eva job, they had her pose for photographs and film, so they could superimpose her into images of the real Kaiser Adolf I, before total chaos broke out in late 1944 and Germany was partly turned to rubble. Janet Podolsky never married in her entire life. She also only had one registered child in her lifetime, her daughter Donna Podolsky, who was conceived with Adolf Hitler's stolen sperm in 1906 when he was 17. Janet Podolsky, unofficially Eva Braun like an acting job for a prostitute between 1944 and mid-1945, never met my great-grandfather Kaiser Adolf I Hitler the Hohenzollern in her lifetime, which spanned 1890 to 1945, and was never photographed with him. Janet Podolsky's look-like cousin and short-statured sister also posed for photographs pretending to be Eva Braun. All images of Kaiser Adolf Hitler with Eva Braun are fake. No exceptions. I, apparently, do not DNA test as being related closely enough to Fritz the imposter, who pretended to be Adolf Hitler, from the body found in the bunker in Berlin in 1945, to be declared a relative. DNA samples taken from me, without permission, compared to samples taken from my great-grandfather Kaiser Adolf, one from before his abduction in 1943, and from every year after his escape between 1959 and 1970, come back saying he was my great-grandfather. After he was abdicated to in 1918 by his predecessor cousin Kaiser Wilhelm I, some people were pretending my adorable homosexual great-grandfather Adolf had to pretend to be in a sexual relationship with a female to get access to his imperial inheritance estate, which is now mine. They took photographs of him that were incompetent and very annoying that allowed room later for a female to be superimposed in between 1933 after he was elected chancellor, spanning through 1940, when he was coronated Kaiser, until his abduction in 1943. The photographs taken of him between 1933 and his abduction in December 1943 were nearly always taken to focus the camera on an imaginary female next to him that was not actually there. An empty space, or empty chair, etc. In the images, he was off to the left or right, or out of focus. They were trying to imply he would only get access to his imperial inheritance estate he inherited when Kaiser Wilhelm II abdicated to him in 1918, and then get to become Kaiser, if a real female was in future photographs, and he was pretending she was his sexual partner. 
but they did not actually tell him that. Instead, they handed him mountains of official photos focused on an empty space or chair next to him, that were almost totally useless, and assumed he would figure it out and comply in the hope he got access to his inheritance. After he finally got access to his estate in the late 1930s, and then became Kaiser in 1940, they kept doing the photograph thing, as if they could not stop or didn't know he had access to his estate. Kaiser Adolf I was abdicated to by his predecessor, and cousin Kaiser Wilhelm II in 1918, but did not get access to his inheritance estate for around 20 years afterwards, similar to me not yet having access to my inheritance estate since he abdicated to me in 1977. After he was abducted in December 1943, and they employed Janet Podolsky to pretend to be Eva Braun, to Fritz the imposter's fake Adolf Hitler, they had Janet pose for images, and superimposed her into all those ones they already had of Kaiser Adolf, one taken before 1944. They put Janet pretending to be Eva into the photographs, in the space the imaginary female was in. Like it was her job to pose for them. She had a production designer, costume designer, an advisor, etc. I am the only genuinely personally authorized officially eligible great-grandchild of, heir to, and successor to Kaiser Adolf I Hitler the Hohenzollern, and Kaiser Wilhelm II, under the constitutional monarchy of Germany great-grandchild rule. If people claim there could be an eligible descendant via the woman pretending to be Eva Braun, Janet Podolsky, found dead in that bunker in Berlin in 1945, then I am the only traceable descendant of her only registered child Donna Podolsky. That implies it would be me anyway. Donna Podolsky, my grandmother, was born to Janet Podolsky in 1907, conceived with then Crown Prince Adolf Hitler's stolen sperm. She was Janet's first, and only registered, child, as Janet was only 16 when she got pregnant without consent. Donna Podolsky married Joseph Stalin, Iosep Dze Gashvili, General Secretary of the Communist Party and Premier of the Soviet Union, in around 1937. Their only child together when they were married, that was registered to them both at birth and went home in their custody, was my mother Judith Margaret Dze Gashvili, born the 6th of January 1940, died 2018. Judith was shipped to Gippsland during Joseph Stalin and Donna Podolsky's divorce process, and officially adopted by the Maslin family here, became Judith Margaret Maslin. Joseph and Donna divorced around 1942. Judith later married my indigenous Gippsland, Australian, Father Kevin Webb, born 24 June 1930, died 2004, on 3 May 1958 in Moe, Gippsland, Victoria, Australia, whilst Kaiser Adolf I was still in POW jail in Yugoslavia. Their only registered biological child they had together during their marriage, via six, that went home in their custody is me. His Imperial Highness Prince Imperial Sir, Brian Webb, the Hohenzollern. I was legally an only child at home to my married parents. My father also raised four older females with a different mother to me, and four separate different fathers to me, who were not related to my father, who are, and were, irrelevant. My father Kevin Webb was born to James Henry Webb, and his wife Myrtle Lingieri, adopted surname Cook, who married in 1927 at a registry office on St Kilda Road, Melbourne. Both James and Myrtle were born in 1906. My grandfather James' father was Kaiser Adolf, one Hitler the Hohenzollern's official imperial consort, live in Lover, in 1943. His name was Sebastian. My father Kevin was born in 1930, before they had met, and was around 12 when they became monarch and consort officially in 1943. Sebastian, my great-grandfather, was the son of Franz Joseph I, the last dual monarch of Osteri Kungan, now Austria, and Hungary, which was dissolved as a monarchy in the first two decades of the 1900s. When Kaiser Adolf I named me his heir, 
correctly under the German constitutional rules, he was unaware I was the great-grandson of his official consort from 1943, Sebastian. He figured it out when I was three, after several conversations with people about it, one that involved informing him of surnames Sebastian used prior to 1943, after he realized his consort had used multiple surnames in his lifetime. When he realized it, it was very distressing for both of us, particularly in reference to him saying I had such a cute little face repeatedly the day I was born. It took some time, but he moved on from it like a champion. My grandfather Joseph Stalin's mother was the last Tsarina, or Queen, of Russia, Alexandra Fyodorova. Joseph was her only surviving child to have children. The Tsarina, her husband Nicholas II, and all their eligible children, were murdered before the end of World War I in 1918. Nicholas II was not Joseph's father. I am not a biological descendant of Nicholas II, only his wife Tsarina Alexandra. Joseph Stalin's father was an indigenous Gippsland man called Viceronus. My imperial Hohenzollern family predecessors, that were also the royal family of the Kingdom of Prussia, with the death of Emperor Wilhelm II in 1941 ending the dual monarchy, leaving only mine, were not in the Tsar family of Russia. The Tsar family of Russia, Tsarina Alexandra, her husband Nicholas II and all their eligible children, were not in the Kingdom of Prussia, prior to their deaths in around 1918. The two, Prussia, declared defunct 1941, and Russia, vacant with no members since 1918, are not interchangeable as if active and related. Kaiser Adolf's grandparents were Kaiser Wilhelm I Hohenzollern, and Mary Schickelgruber, who was the half-sister of Kaiser Wilhelm's life partner Boris Schickelgruber. It was via no sex, with no marriage, via an official imperial parenting agreement. Mary Schickelgruber, my great-great-great-grandmother, was Iraqi royalty. Mary ended up marrying and becoming Mrs. Maria Hitler. It caused her son with Kaiser Wilhelm I, Adolf's father, to change his name from Prince Alois Hohenzollern to Prince Alois Hitler the Hohenzollern after the wedding. Which is where the legal surname Hitler came from. I am not a biological Hitler, neither was my great-grandfather Kaiser Adolf Hitler the Hohenzollern, or his father Prince Alois Hitler the Hohenzollern, second of two eligible children of Kaiser Wilhelm I, or Adolf's older brother Prince Edmund Hitler the Hohenzollern. I am only in one royal family, personally authorized with official documents, regardless of what other royal families I am technically eligible for, with no personal authorization, under similar rules to the constitutional monarchy of Germany great-grandchild rule. Kaiser Adolf I abdicated to me in December 1977, around the 27th. He sent documents off himself to both Germanys, and asked an Italian secret service agent to do the same for him, who promised not to tell anyone. That secret service agent told people living in Verona near Kaiser Adolf I, who knew him as Wolfgang, immediately. They decided to attempt to kill him later that night by poisoning his food at a very late dinner at his house. Whilst he was eating, he suddenly choked and grabbed his chest, unable to breathe properly, and started saying a goodbye on, headed for the local hospital in Verona, Italy. A doctor had followed the ambulance to Adolf's house in a car, and after midnight, into the 28th of December, 1977. The people who attacked him paid the doctor a bribe to write a death certificate immediately, saying he would not survive the incident, and then handed it in at the local police headquarters. They then went back to his, now my, house, and drank from his liquor cabinet, organized a mourning period, wake and funeral date, and immediately started notifying people he was dead, without ever checking with the hospital to see if he really was. He was in hospital for a few weeks, asking what the authorities were going to do about it for him, with hospital staff talking on the other side of the curtain partition saying yes, we know that's really Adolf Hitler in that bed. In the end, they told him the death certificate technically ended his diplomatic asylum agreement in Italy, and if he did so quickly, he was free to leave that country. So, he made the decision to travel back to Gippsland, Victoria, Australia, 
where he was really born, and where he traveled to in 1971, that led to him reviving me with CPR the day I was born in Warragul, January 1972, and lived out the rest of his life in Gippsland. It was more like aged care than anything else, he was in his late 80s when he arrived. I did not have a personal relationship with him, but he did, apparently, live nearby, even possibly out the back of my hometown of Uruguay. I also now think he may have hired a bodyguard to watch out for me after he arrived, when I was around six. He died on his birthday anniversary, the 20th of April, in 1982, aged exactly 93. He had prearranged to be buried in my local cemetery here in Gippsland next to his uncle former Kaiser Prince Friedrich Serf or Hohenzollern, father of Kaiser Wilhelm II and brother of Adolf's father Prince Alois. Former Kaiser Friedrich Serf or retired to Gippsland, the birthplace of his grandmother Princess Louise, in 1890, and died here in La Trobe Valley in 1916. He was buried in my local cemetery, which, likely, already had the remains of Adolf's deceased-born twin from 1889 buried there. Kaiser Adolf I asked me not to tell anyone, after he died, where he was buried, until after a long list of conditions were met. The last one was met in early 2021. I visited his grave on his birth date, the 20th of April, for the first time in 2021, leaving a gay pride flag, and a red paper rose, similar to the red rose shape we had in common in our eyes. I also visited his father Prince Alois Hitler the Hohenzollern's grave for the first time officially on his birthday anniversary this year, the 7th of June. In the same cemetery and left two red paper roses, one for me and one for his wife Princess Clara. As far as 1944 and 1945 goes. Situation 1, underground in Yugoslavia, was Kaiser Adolf, one Hitler the Hohenzollern in prisoner of war jail. The female who hosted the dinner he was abducted from in December 1943 was on the other side of the bars outside the cell. She had a failed pregnancy to sperm she was involved in stealing off him whilst he was unconscious in 1944. Situation 2, in Germany in an underground bunker in Berlin, was a female using the name Fritz pretending to be Adolf Hitler, and a prostitute called Janet Podolsky using the name Eva Braun, like an acting job. Fritz the fake Adolf and Janet pretending to be Eva died in Berlin 1945 from pistol shots to the head. The female host of the dinner Kaiser Adolf I was abducted from, who had the failed pregnancy to sperm stolen off him in POW jail in 1944, was murdered shortly after Kaiser Adolf I escaped in 1959. It was by people who were upset she never informed anyone that a baby had never been born in the jail. Some people had assumed a baby got born around late October 1944, and Adolf was refusing to play along on principle, until he escaped in 1959. When he escaped and was interviewed in Italy, they asked those who interviewed him if he had a woman and a 14-year-old child with him. As if he had finally agreed in exchange for being dragged back to Germany, and they had dropped him at the Italian border, with a woman and a 14-year-old child. Kaiser Adolf I was abducted December 1943. Fritz pretended to be Adolf after his abduction until mid-1945. Janet pretended to be Eva Braun in 1944 to mid-1945. Fritz the fake Adolf died mid-1945. Janet, pretending to be Eva Braun, died 1945. Kaiser Adolf I escaped POW jail in Yugoslavia in 1959. The abduction dinner host female died around 1960. I was born and authorized into my imperial family in early 1972. Kaiser Adolf I abdicated to me in late 1977. Kaiser Adolf I died 1982. One of my biological great-grandparents was found dead in an underground bunker in Berlin in mid-1945, 
Janet Podolsky. The other biological parent, from the same pair, was in prisoner of war jail underground in Yugoslavia in 1945, at the same moment, Kaiser Adolf Hitler the Hohenzollern. All clear. Prince Imperial Sir Brian 1 Webb the Hohenzollern, until next time.